Africa's largest economy is bracing for a strike likely to cripple its gold mining industry starting from Tuesday night. The National Union of Mine Workers is calling out 80,000 workers to try and squeeze a huge pay hike from employers by as much as 60 percent. The shutdown could cost about $35 million a day in lost output. Mining companies, however, are warning that thousands of jobs are on the line. Here's CCTV's Guy Henderson with the latest. Now, unlike South Africa's platinum sector, which accounts for more than 80% of total global production, gold output here accounts for only about 8%. So the wider impact on the global economy will, of course, be much less. But for South Africa, mining is one of the key sectors in the entire economy. And on the night shift on Tuesday night, tens of thousands of gold workers affiliated with the National Union of Mine Workers here will fail to turn up uh, for work in their first industrial action of this wage negotiation season. The uh, offer being made uh, for wage increases by employers is only a fraction of what unions and their members are demanding. This is the most significant uh, strike um, in any sector in South Africa that we've seen during this most recent wave um, of strike action. And it comes on top of tens of thousands of workers in the airline industry, the auto industry, and the construction sector as well, who are also currently engaged in uh, industrial action, but expect more strike action to break out in the mining sector in the weeks and very possibly months ahead. Di Henderson, CCTV, Johannesburg. Also, a Barclays Bank is less than a month away from pulling the plug on Somalian money transfer company Dahab Shill, which is set to have its accounts closed on the 30th of September. But the effect on Somalia could be devastating, as a significant part of that country's income is sent from Somalis living abroad. The move is, of course, a bid by Barclays to comply with international money transfer regulations and to limit their risk exposure on that front. But with no other banks willing to provide the same service, many money transfer companies will just have to close down. CCTV's Natalie Fieri looks at the impact this policy is having on Somalis living in London. For London, Somali community sending money back to Somalia is part of everyday life. Remittances account for over half of the country's income and are the only way many families can afford food, medicines and schooling. Following decades of war, Somalia has no banking system, so people use money transfer companies such as Dahab Shil. But this vital lifeline may soon be cut off. Barclays was the last British bank to offer accounts to Somali remittance companies. Now Dahab Shil is set to have its account closed by the end of September. I send the money for my mom and uh, the rest of my family as well, brothers, sisters, and uh, that will affect us. I don't have any other system to send the money to my family. That means the people they died. Any option that I can send it to them, well, I have to do it. Because, well, this is what they spend and this is how they live. So international cash transfers could be pushed underground. Consumers will have no choice in many cases but to use illegal money transfer operators and that will be very negative because uh, the security of the, of the money will be much less certain uh, and uh, it will be much more open to abuse. And it is precisely to comply with anti-money laundering and anti-terrorism financing regulations that Barclays is shutting remittance companies' accounts. But Dahab Shil says it is prepared to comply with any new eligibility criteria. Uh, we would like to, to, to contribute from our part and we are willing to be part of any uh, uh, review code of conduct. Many say governments need to be the driving force for a solution. Somali migrants in the UK are estimated to send about a hundred million pounds a year back to Somalia and many like those gathered here at this Save the Remittance Giving campaign event are urging the UK government to stop Barclays from closing Dahab Shil's account. We're placing pressure not just on Barclays but on the UK government as well to sort of say, well, look, can you step in, please, and try and find an alternative bank? If there is no alternative, then there will be humanitarian disaster. Aid agencies warn that Somalia's long-term development is at serious risk of being damaged if the Somali diaspora is not able to provide its country with support. Natalie Fieri, CCTV, London.
And you can certainly look forward to a conversation from Mogadishu in London on that at 1700 GMT. Right now, though, quick run through the numbers. Equity markets across Africa taking yet another beating, at least in some ends of the continent. The Nigerian also, however, up in early morning trade by 0.24 percentage points. The uh, Aussie index in South Africa also in the green, up by over a third. Different story, however, in East Africa. The 20 share index in Nairobi, Kenya. That bear run down there does continue. It's down by about six tenths. And the Egyptian market relatively flat, but uh, verging on the red zone, down 0.08%. Right, on to sports now. Here's what's coming up.